So for more reaction and insight, we now welcome Colonel in the Reserves, Dr. Danny Tirza, Israeli geopolitical expert who was the chief planner of the security fence that was a key element in stopping Palestinian terrorism in the early 2000s and saved the lives of thousands of people. He joins us now live from Kfar Adumim. Dr. Tirza, thank you so much for joining us on this day. I want to start with the latest developments that we're hearing just in recent hours, the fact that the IDF says it's already starting with construction, with engineering, in fixing the holes in the fence. Your reaction to this new development? Well, this work has to be done all the time. It's a routine work. You're building something, but you have all the time to understand the whole concept. The fence is not electrified. There are no mines in the ground. So the fence only uh, is an infrastructure that gives an indication if someone tried to cross it. At the moment that we get this indication, the forces on the ground have to run and catch the man before he gets to his target. If the fence is only an infrastructure and people are not on the ground, it doesn't help. Like what happened in Texas, that people were coming and fiffing at the barrier that was built by metal. Here, the fence is part of a whole concept of security that starts from the Palestinian towns, uh, goes to uh, the area between them and the fence, and along the fence. So when we look at the footage right now and we see the ease with which people are able to get across that fence, as we know, this is about security. It's about preventing terrorists from entering Israel. Personally, how did you react when you heard that two terrorists had managed to enter through a hole in that fence and one carried out an attack in B'nai Brak and one in Tel Aviv in recent weeks? Your response? Well, I was very sad, but... I tried for a long time uh, to alert uh, the chief of staff of the army, the people that are responsible for that. They are not putting enough forces on the ground. The security situation was that they succeeded uh, to prevent the terror attacks by uh, operations inside the Palestinian areas, but you cannot do it with 100%. If there is no barrier on the ground, you cannot do it. You have to understand that the people that are crossing uh, are not innocent people. The people that are crossing even to work in Israel, these people cannot get a permission to work in Israel because they have some security problems. And if we don't check them, <laughs> we cannot be surprised that the terrorists uh, succeeded to cross it. So just to be clear then, who is to blame for these gaps? The army chief, the defense minister, the prime minister? Exactly who is the person where the buck has to stop when it comes to seeing these infiltrations? I, I don't try to blame. I try to show what needed to, do, to be done. And really, it's everyone. It starts from the battalions on the grounds that the... Uh, they prefer to do other works. It's a routine work to, wor to work along the fence. So they prefer to do other things. Uh, their commanders, the commander of the central command, it, that's his duty. He's signed on this mission. And if he's not doing this uh, mission, you have to, see, to ask why. So why? I'm asking why. Probably because he see other missions and other missions are more sexy, more uh, the soldiers like to do it, the commanders like to do it. It's not a routine work. And really, where are you putting your budget? Every time you have problems with the budget, but this budget is part of the uh, budget of the Ministry of Defense and the Army. And the Army have all the time to put the right money uh, to uh, maintain the, the security barrier uh, all the time. If they are not doing it, if they are taking it to other things, uh, you cannot be surprised that someone succeeded to cross. 
We're hearing right now that upgrades are going to be including concrete reinforcements, protective equipment, and additional technological components. Explain what that means. What kind of technology is needed to be upgraded right now to stop situations like this happening again? Briefly, please. Okay. First of all, the technology can make less forces on the ground. You can enforce the, the low without so many soldiers as needed in the uh, before uh, 20 years as we thought that it will be. Today, there uh, is more technology that can work along the lines. We have unmanned cars that can do part of the duty of the uh, patrols. Uh, we have a lot of uh, things that we can do. The other things is the checkpoints. Right. Most of the terminals work very good. They have very good, they have very good uh, equipment to check people as fast as needed. But there are a lot of uh, gates, agriculture gates. Right. And in these agriculture gates, we need more technology that it will be more smooth to cross there.